next one um, I'm going to ask is, um, you're talking about what it means to um, be an architect of your own life. Yes. Um, and I was just going to ask you, what, what does that mean to be an architect of your life? Well, you know, in, in all of my books I talk about this idea, idea of being an active architect of your own life, which is this idea that we can build and create whatever life we want. But most of us, we have an intuition about what we want our life to look like, but very few of us actually approach our lives from the, the standpoint of like an architect builds a structure. We don't start with uh, a blueprint, and we don't sketch out our life. Then we don't actually necessarily, in a tacit way, we, we kind of build a foundation, but not necessarily that strategically. And then you go, you know, you go through these steps, like an architect actually approaches building a structure. I like to talk about uh, impact and legacy. The idea that most architects want to build a, a, a structure that lasts beyond them, right? They don't want, most architects don't want to build a building that falls down quickly, right? They want to actually build a building that when they're long gone, people say, you know what, that was built by X architect. And we can think of our lives that same way. What about building a life that lasts beyond us? So what kind of impact are you going to have while you're here? And what kind of legacy do you want to live? You know, leave. And mo most of us um, end up thinking about our children that way, right? That's my legacy. But we can also think about actually what we do in the world to be our legacy as well. And that's kind of what I mean by that. Yeah, that's great. Um, what inspired you to, I mean, to have this plan or, or to be a speaker? Um, I know you also have Manifest Your Destiny. Mm -hmm. um, what inspired you? Was there a specific person or um, experience that impacted you? No, it was, it was a, a gradual process for me um, in terms of, of the books first. You know, I, I've, I've written four books, and, and the books are really about just subject matters that I care about, you know, that I think that, 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 that create, hopefully sow some positive seeds. And, and I think that anybody who has any measure of a platform, if you don't use that platform to do something positive with it, then what's the purpose? You know, what's the use of having the opportunity if you don't use it? There's too many people, particularly in my business, the entertainment business, I think, and I'm not going to name names, but, you know, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out who they are, that have a wonderful platform but do nothing with it except to maybe make themselves wealthier or more famous. Um, you know, it's kind of the... The, uh, 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 the approach to do you want to use your platform to help or not? And that's, w that's what I think about. So the speaking, the, the books, it's all about that. You know, you know Dr. King said, I mean, I'm going to say this quote during the talk, you know, Dr. King said, we're all tied together in a garment of mutual destiny. That means that you and I are connected. If the, the more you rise and shine in any way, you give me permission to do the same and vice versa. So we're all connected. And the more we embrace that, the more I can sort of spread that idea out there, I think it can it can uh, it it comes back to me as well and helps me. That's a great way of thinking about things. Um, okay, uh, so some people have argued that America is post-racial now that we have our first black uh, man in the Oval Office. Okay. Um, do you see MLK's dream in action right now? Well, you know, I think that that uh, Dr. King's dream is certainly uh, 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 in formation. You know, uh, and what I mean by that is, if we look at why, in, in the time period that Dr. King was killed in Memphis, he was killed at a time that he was fighting for workers' rights, and he was fighting poverty. And, you know, at that point, uh, you know, the civil rights movement, so to speak, and Jim Crow segregation had been ended, right? So he was actually fighting a fight for sanitation workers in Memphis. And, you know... We still see poverty across this country. We still see, um, you know, uh, undereducated groups of people, folks who, who, as much as we want to talk about our education system, in many, in many public school systems, it's failing our young people, right? Um, you know, these are big systemic issues. And so it's not about the race of the individual in the White House. It's about, I think, about how individual groups are being treated or handled. And it's, 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 it's also about us as a collective, and are we going to continue things that, it doesn't take, again, a rocket scientist to see that there's, there are problems and issues about if you, if you don't educate a young person, right? And, you know, all the data suggests that every dollar you spend on a young person's education pays you back by seven by not having to deal with issues around crime, you know, and all sorts of other ills that come out. Plus, you have a more educated person that 
you know, in theory gets a better job that actually pays into the system, that, you know, and pays taxes. So, you know, do we want to create and continue to cultivate cultures of folks that actually can live better, more masterful, or more architect-filled lives, or do we want to create a culture where we're creating an underclass of undereducated peoples? And I think that Dr. King, if he were alive today, would certainly be fighting poverty issues, certainly talking about um, um, education being a huge issue, you know, and, and, and so I think that the dream is information. How did Manifest Your Destiny Foundation to help underserved youth, and you've had many books and motivational sp like speaking that's helped others. Um, after all your amazing experiences, what advice would you give today's youth? Wow, you know, I mean, that's that, that's a big question. For me, Manifest Your Destiny represents just what it, what what the title is, and that's my that's my foundation. And, and we're we're all about this idea that whatever you dream, whatever you think is possible, you can actually create it. The question is how. You know, most people don't tell us how. Most people don't talk about the how. They just talk about what do you want. Someone says, I want this car, or I want this life, or I want this house, or I want this job. And then, but then it's really about well, what are the micro steps that we need to do to get there. Most of us want to win the lotto, right? We just want to have it magically fall into our lap, something that we want. And manifesting your destiny means actually saying, I'm in control of my life. No matter who I am, no matter what I look like, no matter where I'm from, no matter what opportunities I've had or not had, I actually can create whatever life I want. I can manifest my destiny. And, and so it, that's the message fundamentally because too many times I think our youth get a message that, well, if you don't have this, you're never going to get that. If you don't do this, you don't, I mean, there's so many, um, I do a lot of work in, in, uh, in, in prisons and, and with, with youth who are incarcerated. And you, so many of our, these young guys that I talk to, they say, well, the only way I can make money is uh, crack, rap, or ball, right? And they've been, but they've been told that, right? It's a fiction. Right? But somehow, they've been told it so much from when they were young that there are only three outlets for them, three opportunities. And, but it's wrong. So how can we reprogram? How can we actually let people know that there's so many things you can do, but there, you have to approach it very systematically? Powerful. Wow. Um, so if you could, in turn, give your younger side advice after all of your experiences, what would you tell yourself as a younger person? Oh, I would say take more risk. You know, I think that most of us, we get, we, we allow fear, and I'm going to talk about that today during my talk. Fear is the number one thing that stops most of us. I call it, I say fear stands for false evidence appearing real, right? We've been told, we've been fed all these false fears, just like the example I just gave to, about the young man. It's, we've been fed so many things that limit us, and so most of us are stopped before we even start. Um, and so I would... I would be more curious, take more risk, explore, do more things. Um, so many, in, and so many people in our lives, no matter who we are, we have people that I call the doubt whispers. They'll all, no matter what you say, they'll say, "Oh no, you know how hard that is. You can't do that." And as soon as they said that, that plants a seed. Then all of a sudden, you almost stopped yourself before you even started, or you kind of stick your toe in something that requires you to jump in. And so, and then you say, oh, yeah, I kind of stuck my toe in it. See, it didn't work out. But you made it not work out by just doing that. Some things require you to go, you know, to jump in full force. And so uh, that's what I would say to my younger self. Excellent, excellent. Um, with all your exceptional degrees in education, I mean, you have so much. Um, too many degrees. <laughs> too many degrees. I don't know if that's possible. But um, what's one of your greatest accomplishments or one that you feel the most proud mm, of? You know what? I'll tell you. I recently was given an honorary doctorate from Howard University. And that Howard University is a historically black college where my parents actually met. Um, they were in medical school together at Howard, and that's where they met. So, but for that institution, I wouldn't even be here, right? <laughs> so to have things come full circle, and I don't even, you know, when they chose me for my honorary doctorate and to give, uh, uh, to speak at, during their commencement, I don't even think they knew that, right? That I had a connection to the university in that way. And so I'm very proud. If we were talking about a specific, you know, degree, I mean, although it's an honorary doctorate, it, that, that connect, the, the connectivity about having your life go full circle, 
from literal inception to...